High Court of the Federal Capital Territory has been asked to sack the May Mala Boni led caretaker committee, an extraordinary national convention planning committee of the All Progressive Congress, and nullify all the actions taken by the committee so far. Well, joining us to discuss this is communications analyst Ihe Chuku Ibeji and legal practitioner Stephen Aguiode. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. All right. I'm going to start with you, Aguiode, because um, this is a legal matter. And we know that um, one of the reasons why the Congress is being challenged is that um, there were cert certain issues, legal issues, that had preceded this Congress. In fact, people were hoping, or uh, many had said, that this Congress should not happen. And many had asked that, the, that Buni himself step aside. But now, someone is now going to court to st challenge, you know, uh, the leadership of Budi and asking him to step aside. Now, I'd just like to refer to a judgment that was um, done on the APC Congress, and I'd like to talk about the implication. Um, apparently, the APC, like I said, had approved the Congress for last weekend. Um, the implication of that case was that um, going by the just-delivered judgment, any election that, was, that would have been done by the buni led committee can be challenged in a competent court of law by opposition parties and even members of that political party. But breaking down to the, the simple man as to what exactly is happening in the APC and why even opposition parties can challenge the internal politics of the APC. Well, it, it all comes down to the case of the Akiri Dulu JKD which was recently decided by the Supreme Court. Three of the justices made what they would call in law obiter statements. The statements that don't go to the root of the case, but uh, affect the issue at hand tangentially. They were not the basis of the decision. What the three judges said was that under section 183, of the constitution, the executive governor of a state cannot uh, occupy any exec any other executive position. The, the provision of section 183 is very clear. Once you are a governor, you cannot take up any paid employment or you cannot take up any executive position. So it is the uh, obiter of some of three of the justices of the Supreme Court that has raised the issue of whether this caretaker, this, the uh, executive committee of the APC, which is being uh, operated right now as a caretaker committee, is legal, and whether APC is not in danger of uh, of uh, of having actions taken by the, that body nullified in future and declared illegal. So that, that is the root of all this, uh, uh, of all this controversy. Let me, let me refer to what uh, Mr. Festus Keyamo, who is a member of the APC, uh, had to say. He had advised that the party avoid a wave of legal battles. Um, he also said that the APC had the option of excluding not only Buni, but anyone holding uh, the uh, executive position in any government establishment from the Ketika Extraordinary Convention Planning Committee as stipulated um, in Article 17 of the party's constitution. He also went up ahead to talk about the fact that under Article 25 of the APC constitution, it is the national chairman or two thirds of the members of the NEC, that's the National Executive Council, that can summon a NEC meeting and he said, I quote him, since we cannot vouch for the legality of any neck meeting summoned by Meimala Buni, now the safest way or the safest thing to do is to get two thirds of the neck members to sign an invitation to summon a neck meeting where the CECPC would be reconstituted and the party would be safe. This was what Festus Keyamo said. Um, I, my question, obviously, is why is it taking, I mean, we've seen this is a member of the party who is also a senior advocate of, the, uh, of Nigeria. Why is it so difficult for the party to absorb what even their legal practitioners are 
you know, um, saying. Again, let, let's revert to what happened over the weekend as to the APC Congresses. There are, there are contemplations as to whether these Congresses might have to be done all over again. Does that not show that the party is being messy or there is a serious split as to op opinions in, within the party? In the first place, a, a democratic party has no reason to have in place a caretaker committee. But if for any reason, necessity made you have such, one would have thought that at the earliest opportunity, you would reorganize yourself and go to convention. I, I had thought that when the caretaker committee was formed, the object of it, the, what would have immediately happened was that the APC should have gone into convention mode. Uh, it is that um, inability to move towards a return to democracy that is causing all this. You remember this, uh, this uh, caretaker committee has been around for about six months or so mm -hmm. now. There was ample time to rectify the processes of, a, of a APC. It's a shame that we are here. Particularly, it's happening at a time when PDP itself is also in crisis. So our political system is almost in a mess. Hmm. It's, it, it, it's sad. It's very sad. All right. Let me let me go to Ihechi. I, I I hope you can hear me. Ihechi, can you hear me? Hello. I can I can can barely hear you. Okay. I'm going to try as much as possible to be audible. Um, just as you have heard Mr. Stephen Aguirre speak about, you know, the break, uh, the crack in the party. And the, cons the, cons uh, the Congress that we had over the weekend, and we can see that there's a back and forth as to whether Bunny should step down, whether he should be sacked. Now there's a man in court who has officially lodged a, a complaint asking that he also step down uh, for the party to be able to move forward. Uh, let's ex assess you know, the, the APC right now, because we just finished talking about the PDP and the internal crisis that they're facing. Even at that, even at the fact that the APC is having internal crisis, we still see people leaving the PDP to the APC. And I have asked this question over and over again. Will the APC be able to survive 2023? Because many pundits have said uh, that the foundation of the APC was not built on solid ground. Where do you stand on this? Okay, so um, I think that, um, I'm grieving everybody, I think that um, what is happening now, the kernel of this issue is in this recent judgment, this recent Supreme Court judgment, um, this recent Supreme Court judgment that tilted um, just very narrowly on technicality to the, to the hands of the current on the state government. And um, all of a sudden, the foundation doesn't look so, so solid, uh, you know, coming from where um, uh, political actors in the APC are looking at it. Now, while the PDP people, and look, it's a game, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a game of politics, pure politics. Previously, before that, um, before that particular court judgment, you had seen that some of the PDP, you had a chief PDP governor who had decamped and some, a PDP governor who had decamped and some PDP, um, members who had also decamped. But what has happened with this judgment now is that all of a sudden, with the faint um, four to three, right, narrow split, split in between that judgment uh, in favor and the issue that brings to bear the legality of the current um, caretaker committee as against having a democratically a democratic structure in place to have in have the uh, power to um, appoint or sorry, or sorry to nominate governorships or across board. What it has done is that it has given them a share that. If they go ahead with the World Congress um, and they continue to go ahead with the major elections, um, I mean, anybody can come out and take them to court. And using that technicality that they pointed out, and of course, they completely destroy their plans. So what you're seeing is pure politics, pure politics. And there is a real chance, looking at it from this court judgment now, that that can happen. That all their plans, if hinged on the foundation of a... Supreme Court judgment that has made it look shaky. All their plans, if they eventually win, can come crashing down. And look, let me tell you the truth of the case. Just as we are seeing in Anambra State now, people are ready to go to court on any or the flimsiest of excuse because the price is choices. And, it, and let me be very frank with you. I do not think it's about the people at this point in time. It's about personal interest. 
all right? And so people want to be in power for as long as possible. So you have a caretaker committee chairman who continues to carry on because he has supporters and people who believe that he should be there. And but on the other hand, you have um, a greater interest of people who also feel that the caretaker committee chairman, who is the governor, should not, at the same time, you know, hold the uh, office of the chairman. They have their own interests. So the truth is that there's a real danger that going by this current court judgment, Supreme Court judgment, if they use that as a plank or even ignore that and go ahead to build on what Congress did, go down to nominations of uh, across uh, national uh, uh, across states and national uh, 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 locations, that in the build up to 2023 election, there's every possibility that that court judgment can be used against them in the eventual uh, turn of things. And that would be very, very disastrous to them. So even the PDP people who are um, decamping now are beginning to think twice, I should think. And that is the kernel of the problem. Let's, let's again, I, I want to push you further because um, we see that many, this, this is a factional problem within a party. Um, and, and there are those who are behind Buni, there are those who are against him. But if the party were to decide to choose someone to head that, um, you know, committee, that Keteka committee, um, who do you think would be the best person that would represent all, all the opinions, all of the people and their interests? Don't forget that there is also many, there are many key players. We have the national leader of the party on one side. We've heard all kinds of rumors as to the cracks within the party and those who are supporting him. We saw the APC in Ekiti just before the Congress uh, and, you know, the issues that they had. We saw parallel Congresses in different parts. We saw in Abia. The party has also come out to say that they're going to punish the, the members of their parties who have got, gotten into those parallel primaries or parallel, parallel Congresses. So there seems to be so many factions. Who can be that unifying person within the party that would be you know, able to lead the party out of the distress that they seem to be in? Well, um, to be quite frank with you, there seems to be, um, in terms of agreement, there seems to be an agreement that the current judgment has brought up a serious issue that must be addressed. So that's why you see a lot of meetings are being held, uh, even from the very highest point, even involving the vice president and every other person. Now, aside the current caretaker committee chairman, there has been no clear court um, a person who a contender who has come out as a date to, to, to show interest in that current uh, seat. But there are interests. And there have been suggestions, even from the background, that the previous the previous democratically elected structure should be reinstated. You get it. So now that is a major plank of what is currently going on. Now at the point where there's going to be a meet of okay, can we get that democratic democratic structure as a suggestion? to avert any issues that this Ketika committee, in terms of using it and um, uh, looking at its legality, will bring up in the future, that is when you are going to see the person behind the curtain. But trust me, the ways, the push for a democratically elected structure and a chairman as against having to fall to pity for a court process is being done by an unseen hand. And that's how politics is being played. And that's exactly what's going on. So no name can be brought to fall. Projections, previous democratic structures should be brought to place. But guess what? Even the previous democratic structures had their own baggages. And those baggages were what were the things that pushed them off the pitch in the first place. So there must be a person who they'll come up with in terms of a consensus that is going to um, help to settle that, okay, he will stand for the caretaker committee and he will stand for the future. But the truth is that they have to do it fast. They have no chance but do it fast because some Congress, some World Congresses have already been done based on this, this current critical committee. So they have to get it down and then decide whether they're going to hold World Congresses all over again. Okay. Back to you, Mr. Gandhi. Let's talk about, again, uh, he's raised a lot of issues, but I just, I just I will try to lump it up in one question. Um, we've looked at the legal angle, we've looked at the political angle and all of the problems that could be. I, I just spoke to someone from the People's Democratic Party or someone on the issue of the Pe People's Democratic Party and, and the fact that there people in the PDP still moving to the APC. But, but um, he just made mention of the fact that most of these people who have gone to the APC will probably be regretting it because of the issues that are already in the party. Now, I asked earlier on, 
the foundation of the APC and how the APC came to belong, uh, to become rather the APC uh, and a very huge opposition to the PDP. We saw the different political parties that came together. Um, and I, I want to ask the same question I asked him. With all of these blocks and the strong men that these blocks have, do we see the APC surviving um, this particular storm? Because it looks like, like you said, the easy thing or the easy way out is out there in black and white, but nobody seems to want to um, take that, tow that line or take it and, and make everything go away. But even if they were to tow that line, does it make the problem go away? Or are there deeper problems? Is there the hand of Esau in all of this? And where does the president come in uh, uh, in all of this? Being that whether we like it or not, uh, he's an APC member, even as he's a, a, a president. But the last thing you said captures it. In fact, that's where I was going. You see, we have the way we have evolved our presidential system and our party system. The president is the leader of the party. The current crisis is the, how do I say, the buck stops at the president's desk. If the president had been proactive, matters would not have got to this head. In my view, viewing it politically, President Buhari did very well. When there was a crisis with the former, um, the, with the previous executive, he managed to stabilize the party by bringing in a caretaker committee. But as things progressed, I thought it behoved him to take another step and say, okay, this temporary measure, how do we find a, a permanent solution to it? I mean, look, let's look at this thing first of all from i i i remove my lawyer hat and and I, I i take a political hat now you are the president of nigeria you have had the hand in the caretaker committee being put in place uh, you know in nigeria we have uh, this issue of zoning and federal character if only it was for that issue alone i would have thought you would have said oh I am the president from a certain part of the country. The head of the party previously was from another part. So therefore, this temporary arrangement can only last for so long. I need to move forward. I need to ensure that when the party goes to convention, the proper part of the country to which such a post should be zoned to, should which you go to it, and all that. So I see what has happened as um, something that uh, <laughs> At the end of the day, the box stops with him. He could, if we say who failed in this matter, we would have to look at him very closely and say, couldn't he have done better? And then you now you have you have a situation even that you know the president has just one year more to go. What if you look at it? Where we are is that the president has only one year to go. We have an APC now, which at this juncture, we don't have presi uh, aspiring presidential candidates. We, nothing is going on there. We cannot even say, oh, come, let's say, second guess. Who will be our president in social so time? Who is setting out an agenda for the future? A troubled economy population overblowing, so many problems. So who is setting an agenda? Who is talking about APC? There's nobody talking. Nobody talking. There's no presidential, there, there's no hope of somebody coming to take over. No, nobody is setting off a future vision. I mean, it's a, the silence of a graveyard. Then you have the PDP. Well, ever since they left power, they've been a shadow of themselves. No, no, there was no regenerating vision, nothing. The party has just been lack, a lackluster opposition. In fact, there has been no opposition. What we have seen now is that there are party people just move from one party to the other. I mean, I, 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 I fear for my country. I well, fear for my country. On because, that, well, on that, very, on, very, on that very gloomy yes. note, we want to say thank you, gentlemen, because we're out of time. Ihek Chukwibeji, Stephen Agyode, thank you very much.
for being part of the conversation. Thank we you. appreciate it. Thank you very thank you. much. All right. Well, on that note, thank you all for being part of the conversation. I will see you tomorrow on Plus Politics. I am Mary Anacone. Have a good evening.